So in the previous class, we were just discussing about the cryogenic vacuum pumps. I just shall go quickly, which we have already discussed. The vacuum pumps which are required in order to store or to generate the cryogenic uh, fluids. The cryogenic, there are different types of fluids so which we have already uh, discussed is helium, argon, neon, hydrogen. Okay, different types of uh, nitrogen, all those things comes into the picture. I just shall go quickly with the physics behind of this condensation of these things. Say for example, nitrogen which has got a, a boiling temperature of minus 196 degrees centigrade. So these nitrogen, liquid nitrogen which has been used in order to condense the uh, cryogenic fluids which has got a low boiling temperature than minus 196 degree centigrade. This is what it has been illustrated and these are all the white uh, balls what you can see it here. These are all the the other cryogenic fluids which are getting condensed because of this cryo uh, surface that means the temperature of this surface which will be maintained my, less than the minus 196 degree centigrade that is what okay this is what liquefied gas cryogenic pump wherein which these two cryo panels this will be something like a drum or a, like a boiler wherein which it will be completely covered with the jacket of cryo panels and the, in, inside these cryo panels, a liquid nitrogen is been allowed to flow. The liquid nitrogen, which will be maintained around the temperature of minus 196 degrees centigrade, is been allowed to flow through this jacket of cryo panels. Whereas, you can see it here at the periphery, the liquid nitrogen is entering it over here and entering it over here, and it will be flowing around. The gases which is been already entrapped inside which will be sent out and make this as a vacuum pump and next the gas which is being sent over here maybe a helium or maybe a neon or maybe an organ or maybe any any cryogenic fluid whose boiling temperature is much lower than minus 196 degrees centigrade is been allowed over here and once these gases which comes in contact with this the cryo panels which will be condensed and it will be condensed and it will drops down as a liquid gases and these liquid gases it will be taken out for the further uses and uh, coincidentally my dear friends these things can also be used in order to have a air separation also that means if you want to separate it helium if you want to separate hydrogen or if you want to separate nitrogen separately that means if you want to segregate or separate these different gases can also be used in using the cryogenic pumps. Now, let me come to this theory of operation of compressed helium cryogenic pumps. Helium, the theory of operation of compressed helium. Now, I'm just talking about helium cryogenic pumps only. Everyone who has pumped up a bicycle tire using a hand pump has experienced the effect of gas heating upon compression. Now, my dear friends, I always take this a plunger example. You take your bicycle, cycle, you will use a plunger and you will pump the uh, air into the tires or the tubes. After pumping, after some time, if you touch the bottommost portion of that plunger or a pump, hand pump, it will be very hot. Why it will be hot? Because you are compressing the air, where you are compressing the air that air which will be subjected to a very high pressure and also the temperature of that compressed air will also be increased but simultaneously you are increasing the pressure and increasing the temperature pressure you are increasing in order to in order to allow it to in, enter into the tires as well as the temperature is a default effect PV is equal to RT. Obviously, the temperature is also rising. So, this is the one everybody might have come across with the bicycle tire fillings. Okay. As the piston in the air pump is forced down, this is what happening actually. As the piston in the air pump, that is a hand pump, it is forced inside, forced down inside, inside the, it, it is forcing downwards, air is compressed and forced through the inner tube 
it will be forced inside the inner tube wall stem at this point the compression of gas is high and the heat generated is conducted through the valve stem on the fingers that means now here he is just talking about the stem and the finger it is only because the column or the straight cylindrical one which he says it as wall stem and the fingers are the one where in which it is just going out is called as a fingers okay in just the opposite way gases may be allowed to expand rapidly and pull heat from their surroundings this is why the tip of aerosol can become cold when the compressed gas is released now wonderful if you observe the physics behind of it in the bicycle in the bicycle hand pumps when you press it when you press it or push it downwards you are forcing or you are compressing the air in a minimized or a restricted place where it will be subjected to a very high pressure and temperature on the other way on the other side on the contrast of this if you allow the same compressed gas to expand suddenly what happens now in your compression what is happening it is getting heated and it is releasing the heat you it is generating the heat and the excess of heat is leaving out to the atmosphere on the contrast if you are releasing on the opposite side i'm talking on the opposite side if you are releasing if you are releasing the compressed air to expand then what happens it rapidly and drastically expands that means high pressure is been reduced suddenly to the lower pressure since it is not an adiabatic system my dear friends if it is an adiabatic system in the pv diagram obviously the curve will be a linearly downwards like our auto cycle the rejection process during the rejection process what happen it releases downwards from higher pressure to the lower pressure now that is an adiabatic process whereas here it is not a simply an adiabatic process but instead of that what happens since it is not since it is been exposed to atmosphere what happens a compressed gas when it has been released or it has been expanded then it will take the heat from the surroundings because it has to be compensated it has to be compensated the the voice gas law has to be uh, accepted right so it has to obey the law so obviously what happens it takes the heat it pulls the heat from their surrounding and then it that is why the tip of aerosol cans aerosol cans you might have seen it cold when compressed gas is released aerosol gas or you can even you can take it as a deodorant gases when you release when you release the spray it will go cold if you heat a deodorant bottle what happens my dear friends does it works 100% it doesn't work at all so that is the idea behind of this so this effect is particularly noticeable for the cans of compressed prions the micro dusters something to be popularly called as a micro dusters or we also call it as compressed prions where do we use prions prions are used in domestic refrigeration processes prion 1 2 prion 2 2 prion 2 3 are different uh, uh, the refrigerants which are popularly used in the domestic refrigeration applications which is a vapor compression refrigeration systems okay in terms of vapor vapor uh, absorption refrigeration system we use uh, ammonia whereas in the vapor compression refrigeration system we use the prion because it, it has got a very low boiling temperature okay now this effect is particularly noticeable for the cans of compressed prion used to blow dust off the microelectronic parts these are also being used in microelectronic parts say for example uh, the similar example what i can give you is maybe in holi you might have seen a small guns small guns you might have seen it in a holi where you will take you will a you will you will fill the liquid color uh, liquid by pulling the piston backwards and then you will push it right the same one they will use it to remove the dust of the electro microelectronics parts microelectronics parts with very very minute electronic parts which is been embedded in the motherboards of any electronic parts okay the next one is compressed helium refrigerators 
take advantage of cooling effect of expanding gases to produce extremely cold surfaces. Extremely cold surfaces. That means compressed helium refrigerators take an advantage of this cooling effect of expanding. That means a compressed helium, if it has been expanded, what happens? It will get cools. That means it will have a cooling effect of expanding gases to produce extremely cold surface onto which the gas molecules may be captured. No, that means what is he doing is a compressed helium in refrigerator have a cooling effect of expanding gases to produce extremely cold surfaces onto which that means what it will do it is in compressed helium when it is being expanded what happens it will generate it will maintain the surface very cold when the surface is being very cold the dust particles which are coming with the highest temperature compared to this cold surface will be captured onto this surface which helps us to remove it are you getting my point okay the similar one it is something like this uh, it should be noted here that at no point in the operation of helium compressor is the helium condensed in a liquid that means it should be noted here that no point in the operation that means at any stage of the operation helium compressor is operation of the helium compressor is a helium condensed to a liquid helium will not be condensing into liquid that is what he says at any stage of the operation in the helium compressor helium will not be condensed into a liquid state okay it just absorbs it just expands and makes the surface cold that is what the idea behind of it all helium refrigerators used to produce cold surfaces for cryo pumping have three basic components so basically these refrigerators will have three basic components they are helium gas compressor the connecting lines and the cold head are the three parts obviously the compressor is required for any type of refrigerator then the connecting lines then the cold head is required these components are carefully matched to work together properly with very few exceptions components from different manufacturers cannot be intermixed and be made to operate properly say for example the idea behind of this helium refrigerator is basically it will have these three parts and it should be located and made it in a flow lens so that it works properly that is one now here you can see this this is a, a different helium refrigerator whereas this is a pump inlet this is called as a cryo pump this is a cryo pump this is a pump inlet pump inlet will have a lot of uh, a series of uh, grid like uh, filters and then the compressed helium line should be there this is a compressed helium line this is a major uh, part to be worried actually where there should not be any leakages and all those things this is a compressor these three are the major parts of helium refrigerators of any purposes that might be used now here the functional components in a compressed helium refrigeration circuit my friend this you can take it seriously because this will this is not given in your textbook which has described so this is what very much low pressure gauge and high pressure gauge two pressure gauges will be there a charge valve or we can call it as a safety valve also we can use it low pressure return valve now here is a cryo pump cryo pump high pressure supply line will be there high pressure supply line will just comes over here and it will go to a low pressure return lines and it will go to the compressor the same compressor i am just giving it with a rectangular box over here immediately after the pump this is this is what we call it as a compressed helium lines using a compressed helium lines it is just going to compressor where it will be measured with a low pressure gauge because it has been expanded so in the compressor it will go to the gas cooler where it will be compressed obviously it will be made of it the compressor efficiency which will always increases with the increase in the difference of inlet and outlet temperatures so what happens it will be compressed and the gas is been cooled using a gas cooler 
it is an oil separator not only this oil separator if there is any moisture content basically this what it will do it is the cryo pump will have an effect of will have an effect of the expansion of the helium gases and this helium gases will be sent to the compressor and the further the gas cooler will be used in order to reduce the temperature further which is being raised in the compressor then it will be sent to the oil separator well which in this oil separator does not only remove the oil content it also removes the moisture content and as well the dust or the any another particles which have been got entrapped in this gases will be separated and then if there is any unavoidable or non removable ones it will be sent back once again to the flow lines if it has been clear then it will be an oil observer it will send to the oil observer and then it will come back to the high pressure supply lines now this is what a functional components of the compressed helium refrigeration circuit the unit referred to as the compression act actually sir <laughs> the unit <coughs> referred to as a compression actually serves several functions in addition to compressing the helium the following compression following into this compression the gas is forced through a heat exchanger which is cooled using flowing water the cooled helium may contain some residual oil vapor from the compressor this oil vapor Could contains in the cryo pump generator. That is what actually this oil separator does. Actually, the oil, the gases which are coming over, over the helium which is been coming over here may also contain oil, which is been present in the pumps. That is which that will be separated over here. Okay. Now that is what he is saying. Following to the compression, the gas is forced through a heat exchanger, which is cooled using flowing water. Heat exchanger or a gas cooler. It is the same thing. Also. now the cooled helium may contain some residual oil vapor from the compressor this oil vapor would condense in the cryo pump regenerator and severely hamper its ability to produce the cold temperatures required for cryo pumping to remove oil vapor an oil separator and an oil absorber are used in series that is what we, we have already shown with the oil separator as well as oil absorbers the oil absorber has a finite service life and must be replaced with a new unit periodically these oil absorbers these oil absorbers has got a very less lifetime so it has to be replaced one in once in a half that is what we say these lines have these lines have special fittings on each end which allow connections and disconnections without losing the helium in the lines maximum lines that means so these between these oil separators and oil absorbers will have a, a different ceilings and fitting uh, arrangements wherein which it will separate only the oil but not the helium that means there will not be any leakage of helium that takes place in both oil separator and oil absorbers these lines uh, maximum line length varies from manufacturer to manufacturer but most models allow this cryo pump to be at least 20 feet from the compressor that means the minimum distance the minimum distance from this cryo pump to the compressor should be 20 feet minimum it is for the safety 
this permits one to place the compressor outside a clean room to reduce contamination or to isolate the vacuum vessel from heat or vibration generated by the compressor that is all it clean the room to reduce contamination or it isolate the vacuum vessel from heat or vibration generated by the compressor that's it now you can see it here the gas in the cylinder is at 300 psi while the pressure in the return line is at 80 psi return line okay that means the gas over here will be in the the gases which are moving in this major line will be under 300 psi that means 300 pressure will be there whereas in the return line it will be maintained only 80 that is all okay now you can see it here helium compressor is this is a helium compressor this is the return valve and this is the supply valve and this is nothing but the pumps up so how it is coming it is just coming over here this is the display and this is the regenerator the center most portion is called as the regenerator and the second you can see it here it just goes through a vent and it just reaches at the bottom of portion now similarly it is just continuing with the series of operations you can observe it here in the beginning it just makes an entry over here and the second it just makes and it, it will be through you can see the position of this as it is making an entry it is creating a pressure over here the place here is less whereas the place here is more as it is further increases now you can see the movement of this the piston during the pump now here while it is going now you can observe it here my dear friends as the heat is been supplied over here at the bottom of portion it will be evaporated and it will tries to escape out through the same vent from which it has been made an entry it is just going as it is keep going towards the upper side it is occupying the place at the upper, upper portion of the piston whereas leaving a small area behind or the below the piston area so this is the one the same step as you can see it here it is making an entry it is making a here the space is more and here it is reducing now it is the place it is something similar to your piston and uh, four stroke uh, engines piston and cylinder same thing which is just going happen this is the one the cross section image of two stage compressed helium refrigerator the motor serves to rotate the valve disc which is supported to control flow of higher pressure this is a low pressure line this is a high pressure line which will be a valve disc which motor will operate this valve disc and in order to move this up and down say for example if this valve disc is moving upwards then the high pressure line will be operated and it will be sent inside whereas the low pressure it will be sent by moving this valve disc downwards the same thing ceiling this is the first stage and this is the second stage if you are not considering the second stage you can limit out only for the first stage diffusion working pump now diffusion pumps i just uh, diffusion pump is one of the most uh, commonly used mechanism for creating high vacuum in industrial vacuum processing as i have already told you creating a vacuum processing is one of the greatest challenge because they have to maintain a absolutely vacuum and and make the other gases to be empty Oh, we have left for ten minutes. Okay, fine then. It is also commonly used in mass spectrometry, analytical instrumentation, research and development, and nanotechnology. So these are the different applications of diffusion, cryogenic diffusion pumps, spectrometry, analytical instrumentation, and research and development, and nanotechnology. Since there are no moving mechanical parts, diffusion pumps are extremely reliable and operates. practically without any noise or, or vibrations first my dear friends these pumps does on almost makes no sound without any noise and vibration these diffusion pumps will operate for the same reason diffusion pumps are relatively low cost to purchase operate and maintain it is also highly effective in producing vacuum up to 10 to 10 to 10 it is actually 10 to the power of minus 10 i'm so sorry actually this is 10 to the power of minus 10 to so 10 to the power of minus 2 millibars even in poor conditions where reactive gases 
or actually this is um, so sorry this is 10 to the power of minus 10 actually this is 10 to the power of minus 10 and 10 to the power of minus 2 millibar even in poor conditions where reactive gases or gases with excess particles are present a diffusion pump is a stainless steel chamber that vary in size based on the application now my dear friends 10 to the power of minus 10 millibar that means 10 to the power of minus 13 bar means it is very it's a it's a, it's almost a zero uh, bar actually zero bar that means you are completely vacuuming the chamber that is the beauty of this diffusion pumps which can generate okay and these diffusion pumps can be of any size basically these will be made up of a metals chamber preferably steel okay which will have a higher strength generally speaking the interior of the diffusion pump regardless of size is the same and consists of three varying size cone shaped pressure jets stacked vertically obviously this will be a cone shape and cone shape they are intentionally making it in order to have a pressure variations the lowest stacked cone is the largest and decreases in size as you move upwards representing a shape of an upward pointing arrow that is what these things you can see it in the sketch <coughs> a cone shaped one as you can see it here the very bottom of the chamber is nearer where the scores the stone based diffusion pump oil is heated until it reaches gaseous state usually between 180 to 270 degree degree centigrade the excited gas travels upwards and exits and exits exits through the pressure jets that are pointed at a downward angle the downward shooting vapor travels at an incredible 750 miles per hour sometimes breaking the sound barrier one mac that means see my dear friends as this travels over here the way the pressure with which <coughs> the speed with which it just coming out will be of 750 miles per hour that means it will be traveling with a the speed of almost a bullet that my medicine so which reaches a mach number of one so as the gas travels towards the walls of the pump chamber this is the wall chamber this completely wall chamber is being circulated with a series of cold water jackets which will take care of it cooling of this uh, chamber as the walls of the pump chamber are usually water cooled and the gas reaches the chamber wall, it immediately returns the liquid to state, releasing the trapped air molecules at a lower position at increased pressure, creating the vacuum. The oil drips back at the bottom of the chamber where it is being heated again. Now, here the oil, whatever you can see, it is an oil at the bottom. As the heat has been supplied to this oil, the oil will vaporizes and it moves with a very fast speed and it just moves around the entire throughout the chamber as this chamber has been completely water cooled as this comes and strikes this uh, inside walls of the chamber it gets condensed and the whatever the air that is being present in that will be condensed and it will be makes into a condensed condensate and it will send out to the pore form. This is the idea behind of a diffusion pump. So, my dear friends, this is the major applications of a diffusion pump, and more of almost all industries does have a diffusion uh, pumps applications, and it is uh, effective and financially financially uh, advan advantageous because it is of lower cost. It has been used in variety of in a different uh, industrial sectors where the vacuum chamber is required. 